Hi, it's Polly here in Norway. Uh, sorry, no, it's in Thailand. Uh, this is Chiang Mai. Oh, it's Mr. Schnoots. We are on Temple Mount. Yay! One of my favourite places on earth. Spectacular views of northern China down below. Schnoots is happy. Yay! We are here again. Wow, never thought I would be here again. Fantastic stuff. So look, anyway, we would like to talk to you about a very cool game. This has been sent by my good friends from Stella Gamer, so they sent this to me. Um, and uh, it's Barbaric 2nd Edition. Now this is a fantastic game, fantastic little game. Um, it's a 2D6 based game. Uh, it's got absolutely everything you need to run a role playing game, but it's also packed full of quite cool surprises. These guys are excellent designers, love their work. So, um, this is a game of sword and sorcery gaming. It's got a bit of a kind of Conan, um, you know, Robert E. Howdy sort of feel to it, rather than, you know, high fantasy, for want of a better term. Runs of a 2d6 system, 2d6 roll high, and um, it's simple and it's expressive and it's excellent. So, you create and express your characters by splitting up a number of skill points. You've got um, a few different characteristics, um, and they're quite simple. They're things like law, L-O-R-E, and combat, what do we got? Craft, physical, social, stealth. Your split points up, those are a dice roll modifier when you're rolling a dice. So if you've got combat 3, and you're in some kind of combat, roll 2d6, add 3, try and get the target number or higher very simply how that works. Um, you can be non-humans, they have slightly, if that's in your setting, they have slightly less points to split up but they get special abilities. So, you know, an aquatic lizard man could swim and, and it's got its big teeth and whatever, or if you're a antediluvian type like Mel Nibinian, then you, you have some sorcerous bonuses and so forth. Combat, when you've got combat skills above two, for each point above two you gain special combat maneuvers and they might be things like at the lower levels you know you are quite accurate with bows or you get certain follow-up hits or you're good with certain types of weapons etc. The higher the skill the more spectacular those are. Um, so you get second hits, follow-up hits, all this sort of thing so um, it becomes more, what would you say, cinematic as you go into the higher levels, but those are dizzlingly high and hard to achieve. Um, so you create your character by splitting up these points, you pick an archetype for yourself and they can be things like, you know, mariners or merchants or sorcerers and so on. Each of these gets you things. Um, as you get experience, you will be able to use that to purchase more skill points or purchase new archetypes for yourself. Um, so you kind of guide your growth in interesting ways. Now there's a magic system. The magic system is quite dangerous because if you roll a two, the worst that you can roll, then you will have to roll for magical mishaps and they could do dreadful things to you. But the good news is there are advantage and disadvantage okay. dice if you've got advantage, you roll an extra dice and take the two highest. If you've got disadvantage, roll two dice and take the worst. But you've also got hero points, which are used during play. Um, you will have a bunch of hero points within the party and some for yourself. You can draw on the party points if the rest of the players agree. But you can spend that on doing things like re-rolling your own dice or forcing a re-roll on any other dice. So if you did roll bad dice and got a sorceress mishap, you could burn one of these points and roll again. Now, when you're hit, there is a really tasty set of critical hit charts. Anytime you roll a 12, double sixes, or if you beat the enemy's defense number by six, you roll critical hits, and the critical hits are different, um, depending whether it's an edged weapon, a blunt weapon, a piercing weapon, etc. So they're really visceral, you know, yahoo, great stuff. Um, and um, you've also got a characteristic, which is your, um, uh, it's your stamina. Everyone gets a set stamina to which you add some extra numbers depending on the physical characteristic that your skill that you've purchased. So big butch people can take more damage. Now, 
when you're hit by weapons. They do dice, which subtract from the overall uh, stamina. Uh, if your stamina goes down to zero, you've received a wound. You have to make a physical roll against your physical characteristic then to see if you can keep fighting because you're wounded. If you keep fighting, however, normally a wound means you're out. If you decide you're going to make the roll and stay, if you take another wound, you're in trouble because there is this thing called a triage roll at the end of combat which tells you what the wound you took was and you add to the severity of it if you've received more than one wound in the combat so it can go from oh you know horrible cut that's going to heal in a few days or you know a broken arm that's going to keep you out of things for a month to you know your arms cut off you've lost an eye or just as it gets to higher this is what kills you your head's cut off you've been run through you've you know you've died so you You've got to make that decision yourself to push the roll. Um, equipment's very simple. You have encumbrance, and the encumbrance is... Uh, it's done. You can carry a set number of items more, depending on your physical, so thank you for that. thing this game brings in, which I really like, faction design for your world. So it says the region you're setting your... Uh, adventures in there should be factions say it's in a town there might be um, a thieves guild there might be someone trying to take over the town there might be some barbarians camped outside there might be someone who's scheming against the king there might be someone who's kind of um, somehow scheming to take over the thieves guild these are all factions these are done up as very simple characters and it gives them their strengths, what magical resources they've got, what crafting resources they've got, what manpower resources they've got. Now, at the end of any given adventure, each of these factions, they're dynamic. So each of them attempts to achieve something according to the aims and goals of the faction that you've laid out before. You do a roll based on which of their skills it's putting into the test, and off you go. So, um, as factions are working against each other, they weaken each other and whittle away each other's power and can vanish. If a faction whittles all of its levels down to zero, it vanishes or goes dormant. It might come back, but it's dormant. And if you're running factions that start winning, they start increasing in power and influence. So you've got this lovely, very simple way of creating a dynamic world. Um, this is this really makes this game stand out. This shines. What an excellent little system. So anyway, um, get it, have a look. It's on drive through. This is Mitch Snoots and I signing off from Chiang Mai. Uh, we'll keep doing the reviews for you. Um, Barbaric Second Edition. Look for it on drive through. If you've liked the reviews, please hit like. Please hit subscribe. Please hit Patreon. I'll keep doing stuff for you on the road. Okay, bye.